Characteristic overthrow. This movement is pretty much the same as the Elvis. The difference is the angle of the orbit or the direction of the orbit. With the Elvis is horizontal here. Okay. Okay. We are performing a rotational movement in the horizontal orbit. Okay. With the overthrow, the direction of the orbit is diagonal. Okay. It's going to be more this way. Okay. This is the direction, okay, that we are going to be performing this movement, which again is about the same as the Elvis. You're still going to have the pull push component, the angles in the elbows are the same, and the split stance is about the same. So let's go over uh, the steps to make sure you do it right. Number one is where are you going to be standing? Well, usually you want to stand somewhere in the middle of the cable crossover, okay? Number two, you're going to turn to either Stack, okay, and you want to be centered to the adjustable cable tube, okay, right here. Okay, so I'm going to be somewhere here. Or if you see, there's a line, there's a straight line here, okay, that is to indicate that my body is going to be centered somewhere here, okay. So, yes, you're going to, you know, you might push, you might feel like you're pushing the bar to the side, and that is, that's what you need to do, okay. The next step is to decide. Um, well, let's go with the easy part, hampering. Hampering is going to be monkey grip, okay? Like so. Make sure you have an even, even distance, okay? Anchor point to your hand from both sides, okay? Then the next step is to decide where you're going to place your feet. Okay, you know your center, but, you know, are you going to be on top of the line, the straight line, or outside? Well, if you want to have the strongest base possible, your split stance needs to be diagonal in relationship to the straight blue line. So whatever hand, in this case my leg is going to pull, that means my left leg goes forward and it's going to go to the side. Okay. My back foot, which is represents where I'm going to be pushing with you know my arm here, is going to go on the back, okay, like so. But the heel is going to be up. You're going to be internally rotated at the hip, okay? So basically you coil, okay? So your back toes are pointing to your front foot, which is flat, toes to heel, okay? So at this point, you are at a strong base, okay? All you have to do is just keep a low center of mass, okay? And the next is to determine, okay, Jorge, how am I going to push and pull? In what direction? Well, that's a good question. So your push, notice here, first of all, that my forearm is 90 to the bar, okay? My elbow is about 90 here as well, okay? So another way of saying this is your fist is going to be right in the temple height, somewhere there, okay? And your, uh, well, your, your pull hand is going to stay here the same, forearm at 90, and my left elbow stay at 90, okay? In your mind, you have to picture about moving in a throwing pattern, a diagonal force line that goes, you know, that where you're moving from, um, from my right side to moving to left side, but not passing, not passing the uh, the front line, the straight line. Okay, so Jimmy, move a little bit more that way so they can see. See, you don't want to go over the line. Okay, you want to stay right here. The movement is really a 90 degree turn, okay? So again, you here, you're going to be pushing throughout this angular motion at 90 degrees, push, pull, okay? See, watch my, my forearm, so I keep a 90 degree angle, okay? And I stop when I feel I reach max tension, okay? If I keep going, I notice that there's not much tension anymore, so there's no point to keep going. You go back, okay? So notice that when you go forward, when you push, pull, you're coiling your core, your hips. When you go back, you open and uncoil the core. Okay. One more time here. Okay. And just like the Elvis, when it comes to your lower extremity, the front leg. So both are facing not only gravity, but they also have to deal with friction. 
So my front leg is trying to uh, fight friction by pushing back, okay? And the front foot is fighting friction when I'm trying to push forward. Those two forces cancel. The same with my upper extremity, okay? I'm pulling and I'm pushing. Those two forces cancel, okay? So all these forces come right to your core, okay? That's why you feel so much tension all over your core muscle, okay? One more time, here. Set it up, now elbows, forearms, 90, 90, okay? Open the hips and now coil, okay? Open, coil, okay? This movement is paramount, yes, to all throwing physical tasks or athletic activities. That doesn't mean that general fitness should not benefit from it because it will, you know, both market, both populations should, should be able to do it. It's a movement rooted in throwing, so it's coded in your DNA. So to change to the other side, okay, what I like to do is, I like to step under, I guess, you know, go under, okay, and now, my left that was pulling now is pushing, okay? And right is gonna pull, okay? That means if right is pulling, right leg goes forward to the other diagonal line, okay? And left foot goes back, you're right. Heels up, and then you gotta coil, okay? Or rotate your hip internally so your left, your back toes are facing your front foot, okay? Then again, both elbows, 90, okay? Okay, now forearm, 90 to the bar, okay? And then, and then at this point, you push, you pull, okay? And rotate. Notice that my spine is not straight. I have a side bend, okay? That allows me to open the shoulder so I can efficiently perform that push pattern or push pull pattern way more efficiently. And actually, that's how you throw, okay? You don't throw with your spine neutral, you know, like, like, like this, you know? You throw this way, or you throw this way. Mistakes, well, a few, okay? Some mistakes that I've seen over the years is number one, dropping, dropping the uh, back heel, okay, or collapsing uh, the back foot. And that, you know, when that happens, you lock your hip, they don't turn, and then kind of go, you're only moving from the, from the, uh, from the waistline up, okay? And that usually, what, what this happens, the consequence of this is, you have to do, you have to feel it to understand, is there is pain here. It's like your knee is engaging in, in a torsion, uh, pattern, okay? But it's mostly felt in the connective tissue on the medial part of the knee, okay? So, uh, another mistake that I see a lot is um, over, you know, they, they try to over push or under pull. See, for example, like this. See, they're trying to go like so, keeping the elbow straight, okay, like that, okay, or making more of a pull, okay, like like this, okay. See, either way, you're doing too much of one or too little of the other one, or the angles in the elbows are uneven. Another mistake usually is the proper angle. How, you know, what is the angle that I should initiate, you know, this, this orbital or angular motion, okay? Well, I like to keep it about 45, some, somewhere there, okay? There's no exact sign on that, on that end. But too much, too much or too little, uh, no good. For instance, too much means they're trying to go too vertical, okay, like this, okay? That is excessive, okay? It feels almost shoulder. And the opposite is true, trying to go too low like that, okay? It's okay, but what we're trying to do is keep that, we're trying to work that throwing pattern, which is the diagonal angle. All right, let's put it all together, okay? Getting your right footprint, okay? Low center of mass, equidistance, monkey grip on the bar, okay? Elbows, 90, forearm to the bar, 90, okay? Look straight ahead, side bend of your trunk, and rotate. 